Hello and welcome to News Click. Today we have with us Bappa Sinha and we are going to discuss the elections this time in the five states, particularly three North Indian states, what's called the Hindi heartland, and see how the BJP has fared amongst the urban voters this time. BJP has always held a strong position in North India amongst the urban voters. Has it changed this time or not? This is something that we're going to discuss. We have Bappa with us who has done all these maps and this data analytics that you can see on the Newsclick website and what we're going to see here as well. Bappa, let us take, for instance, Rajasthan. We have had a shift from the 2014 to this election from 2013 also, but a less pronounced swing than from the 2014. Now, while the voters have moved away from the 2014 votes that the BJP, and BJP had secured, secured a very large number of the urban as well as rural votes, do you see a difference in the shift amongst the urban voters this time as distinct from the total shift in the state? Yeah, so um, when analyzing the maps, uh, that's a very fairly interesting observation we found. Uh, and this is a pattern which is across all states. Um, across the three states. Uh, across the three states, across Raj uh, the, the Hindi heartland states, Rajasthan, MP and Chhattisgarh. Uh, so what is interesting is that uh, while BJP has seen a, the Modi wave is gone, right? So so the, the spike in BJP vote share, which between 2013 and 2014 elections, that has completely been taken out. Um, so, uh, for example, in Rajasthan, um, when, you are co when you compare with 2013, uh, so, sorry, when you're comparing with 2014, Rajasthan has, the overall state had seen a, um, a BJP slide by 17%. BJP's vote share slid by 17% as, com by 17%. as compared to 2014. Uh, but if you look at the... Um, Rural as the urban areas only, what we are seeing is um, the shift is even more significant. The urban areas, which are how many? So there are um, about 19 constituencies which we are uh, considering as urban areas, which is uh, primarily the Jaipur area, uh, Bikaner, and uh, this is the uh, Jodhpur area, right? Um, so, um, so. In these constituencies, the shift is uh, BJP's vote share has dropped by 22% as okay. opposed to the statewide uh, drop of about 17%. In the map, these areas are very small yeah. because spatially they are dense urban population and therefore don't have covered too much area. That's why it's not so visible in the map. But you are basically saying there are 19 seats in these urban uh, areas. Yeah. And in that, the vote share has instead of 17%, the overall shift, we have how much? 25%. The, the, the vote share has, has dropped by 22%. 22%. So 5% additional shift from the average. Yeah. And if you take the rural uh, shift and compare it to the urban? So uh, if you look at the, if you, let's look at the rural shift. Uh, there, it's the rural shift is about seven, about fifteen percent. So it's less than the statewide average. So, so the statewide average has been increased because of the, the shift, shift in the urban and the semi-urban areas. So let's rephrase this. So the shift is fifteen percent in rural areas. There is a perceptible shift. Yeah. But in urban urban areas, the shift is even more. Even more. That there yeah. is a seven percent additional shift from the rural areas in the urban areas. And the semi-urban areas, which are also fairly large in uh, yeah. number of seats. The, the semi-urban areas, we are, they're mirroring what we are seeing in the urban areas. So the semi-urban areas have a shift of about 21%. So the urban areas are 22%, semi-urban areas about 21%. 21%. So, so in the, uh, if you combine the urban, semi-urban areas, BJP is losing about 21 to 22% of the uh, vote share. Now, of course, what it is due to, we don't know. But it's quite conceivably due to the fact that the demonetization, the GST has affected them adversely, partly because GST has also the initial problem. There's a lot of record keeping, which obviously the small petty traders are not used to. And the petty trading community, as we know, used to be once upon a time the backbone of the BJP. And third, of course, the online retail 
platforms which have come, Amazon and Flipkart, has also affected the petty urban trader. They've been quite worried of this kind of, uh, shall we say, online retail competing with them. So all of this could have combined to see an urban shift. Yeah, yeah. And and like the the youth which had been enthused by Modi's promises in 2014. Um, so what we're seeing is fairly, uh, like in 2014, in Rajasthan, 67% of the urban voters voted for BJP. That's huge. 67%. 67% as opposed to Congress's 28%. So there is a, there was a, almost a, what, about a 40% gap between Congress and BJP? About two-thirds of the urban population voted for BJP. One-third voted for the Congress. Now, the gap is 45 to 41. 45% to BJP. So the gap is, it's almost at par. This is very virtually similar kind of figures. Yeah. Four to five percent does not, in this sense, between two-third and one-third, to almost half and half yeah. is a significantly different set of figures. So what you are saying is not, this is not explained by the urban traders alone, but also by the youth who had been enthused by the promise of jobs and development, which has not been, uh, which has not been shown on the ground. Because as we see, the employment figures have been dismal in this period. Industrialization has not taken place. So shall we say, you know, selling pakoras <laughs> will not fill the ambition or not fulfill the ambitions or the aspirations of the youth today. So therefore, self-employment on these terms is not something which is pro at least support getting votes for the BJP. If we turn to, for instance, Madhya Pradesh, do you see a similar uh, phenomena? Because Madhya Pradesh has been a, also a close election. Rajasthan also has been a close election. The percentage of votes between the Congress and the BJP have been very, very close. It's not that, you know, the figures indicate the the seat figures because BJP is, I think both of them have got between 41 and 42 percent in Rajasthan. Yeah. So, so in terms of vote share, Rajasthan and Madhya Pradesh are identical elections where in, in Rajasthan, both of them have got 39 percent. In uh, Madhya Pradesh, both of them have got 41 percent. In, in the, the seat distribution has is different uh, in, in Rajasthan, BJP, uh, Congress is comfortably ahead while in in Madhya Pradesh, they are neck and neck, uh, but in terms of votes, they are they are identical, and the swings are also very similar. In 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 uh, Madhya Pradesh, the state as a whole, uh, from 2014, BJP is losing 14 percent uh, votes. But if we look at um, the the urban areas, if you look at the just the urban areas. Actually, in 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 MP. Um, it's, it's the, the urban swing is almost the same as the overall swing. The, the Rajasthan has a more pronounced urban swing against the BJP, while in MP it's, it's more evenly spread out. But um, the, the, uh, what is stark is that similar to uh, uh, Rajasthan, in um, 2014, BJP got 60 percent of the urban votes, as opposed to Congress getting about 30% of the votes. So again, a two is to one, two is to one ratio. ratio. That has now shrunk to, again, a 4% gap. 47% to BJP, about 44% to, 43.5% uh, to Congress. So, so we- Interesting, they're still ahead, but only marginally now from the Congress. Yeah. So unlike its earlier, much stronger performance in urban areas, that uh, swing towards the BJP or that, uh, shall we say, propensity to go towards the BJP has considerably reduced at the moment. Yeah, and, and it has not only reduced as compared to 2014 when the Modi wave was there, but even if you went all the way back and compared it to 2008 when there was a, when Manmohan was popular and the UPA2 was about to come to power, Congress has improved even on the 2008 numbers when you just consider the the urban, urban and the semi-urban areas. So this is something which is also reflected in the semi-urban areas. Yeah. So so yes, the semi-urban areas, the the shift to Congress is less pronounced, but the pattern is the same across. Um, and what would be the difference between the rural shift and the urban shift? So in MP, if you look at the rural shift, 
It's it's about the same. There is so MP is more even. Uh, more even. Yeah, MP the rural shift is also about thirteen point five percent, same as the urban shift. So MP it's evenly moved away from BJP, unlike in uh, Rajasthan, which is sh seeing a much sharper uh, shift. But uh, in terms of the final numbers, the MP and Rajasthan numbers are remarkably similar. So what you're seeing is that the, in urban areas, Rajasthan had voted voted much more decisively in favor of Modi yeah. in the 2014 election. So your argument that, in fact, that uh, the Modi wave has really disappeared, that what you now see is the basic BJP strength, if you will, is the Congress, which yeah. is, and these are the two parties in the fray in all these three states. What about Chhattisgarh? Does it behave similar to Madhya Pradesh or similar to Rajasthan or somewhere in between? No, so unlike... It, in both uh, Rajasthan and MP, um, even though the gap has narrowed, BJP still has a, about a 4% advantage in the urban areas. In Chhattisgarh, that advantage has gone. Uh, BJP trails the Congress in urban areas, which is, which is re uh, remarkable, right? Uh, so if you look at Chhattisgarh, uh, um, so I'll, look at, I'll do the comparison with 2014. So again, there is about a 17% shift statewide um, from 2014. Can you explain the colors here? Because there's a lot of faint colors and green colors, which are strong. Yeah. So, 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 so green is a strong. Green is a flipped seat. Yeah. So, so the the map legends are uh, green is uh, uh, Congress and and uh, saffron is uh, BJP. But the bright the bright constituencies are the constituencies which are flipped. So if you look at this map, this is the only constituency which BJP flipped. So BJP did not win in 2014 and is winning now. Uh, while this entire green on the in the northern part of the state and in the Bastar area, these are constituencies which Congress has flipped. So Congress did not hold them in 2014, is holding them now. And this is, uh, the shift is also in urban areas. But what you're saying is that the shift has been of a magnitude where BJP is actually behind the Congress, even in urban areas, unlike in uh, Madhya Pradesh and Rajasthan, where they might have dropped a lot of uh, percentage points, but still are ahead of the Congress in urban areas. Yeah, so, so yeah, in terms of the shift, basically Chhattisgarh, in Chhattisgarh, BJP did not have that kind of advan advantage in urban areas. Uh, even in 2014. And now that this 17% shift has happened, um, BJP is trailing Congress in both the urban and in the semi-urban areas in Chhattisgarh. So, for example, in, in, in the urban areas, which there are eight seats in uh, Chhattisgarh, which is Raj, Raipur, Durg, this is that area. Um, and I think up north here, in the, in, this is the Bilaspur area. So, uh, out of this eight, in these eight seats, Congress now has a 4% is ahead of BJP by 4%. Congress is about 46% and BJP is at 42%. How much was the swing in this? The swing, um, BJP had a 13% swing. So it's less than the, uh, the overall swing in the state, um, but it is enough to now um, put Congress, Congress on top in the urban areas. So do you mean to say the 13% swing against the BJP in urban areas is less than the overall swing? Yes. The so, overall swing is about 17%. So in that case, BJP has not seen a significant erosion of its urban base uh, compared to its rural uh, base, as yeah, it were, yeah. in this case, unlike Rajasthan and Madhya Pradesh. Yeah. But taking all this in consideration, can we say that BJP has an urban problem now as well? Yeah, that's what it looks like. It's, and it's a, it's a long-term problem. It's not just the, the Modi factor and all, but even if you compare the numbers with 2008, BJP is uh, underperforming its numbers in 2008 when BJP was in no position to form a government. Even from those numbers, BJP is underperforming in the urban and in the semi-urban area. So its for vote is even lower compared to the 2008 figures. Eight compared to the 2008 figures. So uh, in 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 the in the urban and the semi-urban areas. So um, the, the the perception that BJP is this urban party and it's an urban middle class and aspirational, aspirational party that is not been reflected on the ground.
that's not borne on by the numbers. Yeah, yeah. There may still be people who are vocally pro BJP and Modi, but it is not so much to do with the aspirational nature, but more to do with perhaps the ideological positions, the kind of, shall we say, a divisive politics BJP is playing, and therefore appealing to a certain middle class. Yeah. Uh, I, think, I think in India, the middle class is um, like, uh, it's the upper middle class, which we see like South Delhi or South Bombay, which, which probably call themselves middle class, but really are rich by, uh, they're, they're in the top 1% of the uh, yeah. population. So that population still is very pro-BJP, uh, but uh, when you look at the, probably from the 98th to 99th percentile, that population is moving away from BJP because... That's an interesting issue because these are basically what are called the Mufassal towns, if you will. Yeah. I mean, that's a very bad colonial word. But if you don't talk at the metropolitan towns, but the non-metropolitan towns, as it were, and of course, Jaipur is still a metropolitan town, uh, so probably some of the other cities we are talking about, for instance, Indore and so on. But definitely the smaller towns are not seeing any benefit of so-called uh, globalization or the so-called middle class boom people are talking about. The middle class boom has tended to be more an IT boom. Uh, very small segments of the people have really benefited it, uh, from it. And the figures seem to show that uh, what you're saying is yeah. the figures seem to show that BJP is consistently underperforming in this uh, yeah. area. So uh, even, in the, even in the top sit, top tier cities, the lower middle class is not seeing any of the boom. The boom is very concentrated in the upper middle class, the people who are working in the IT sector, but uh, the, 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 the people in, in, in the slums, in the semi-slums areas, what comprise the lower middle class, they are, not, they are not seeing any. So this is catching up with the BGP at the moment. Yeah. Thank you very much, Bapa, to be with us and explain with your, this very nice maps that you have managed to create for NewsClick and the database which is connected to it. Uh, NewsClick actually has this maps which connect to the uh, election, co election commission data so that we get election commission data to populate these maps. And it would seem to indicate that uh, we, ca we are seeing a quote, quote unquote secular decline of the BJP's urban base. Right. Madhya Pradesh, last word with you. Anything that Madhya Pradesh throws up or it is really a deadlock situation and uh, as of my latest figures, and I think the counting is now over, that it is now locked at 114, 109. Is that the latest figures? Yeah, 114 to Congress, uh, 109 to uh, BJP and uh, BSP has two seats, SP one uh, and independence of four. And it's interesting because BSP has already said that it doesn't want a BJP government. So it will do anything to prevent the BJP from government to power. If you take that, even the BSP out of the equation or add that to the Congress, at the moment the Congress then has a st at least a stake to form government. Yeah, and, and uh, Congress is claiming that at least two of the independents, they are Congress rebels, so, so they will come back to the party. So Congress seems poised to form the government. In so unless the governor plays a similar role that it tried in Karnataka. And since that has backfired badly in Karnataka, maybe this time the governor will be wiser and not follow in the Karnataka governor's footsteps. Thank you very much, Bapa, to be with us. And we will come back to you with more analysis in NewsClick about the elections and its aftermath.